Okay. Yeah. We left half off over here. Chov of them, he's 26B. No, thank you. Okay, over here, right in the middle of the page. Boy, mine Rafilo mi robo. Yesh muktzel chazi shabbos and muktzel chazi shabbos. Tomorrow, what we'll explain what does it mean? Is it possible to have muktzel only for half shabbos, or there is no such thing as muktzel chazi shabbos? Hey, domi, what is the case? What is the the situation? Idarzi bein hashmoshes ichsi. If something is fit and available, bein hashmoshes when Yom Tov begins or Shabbos begins, so it's, it's not muktzel. Eid lowerzi, lowerzi, and if when Shabbos begins, it's not available, so it's muktzah. Lo tzvichadirzi. We speak about initially when Shabbos began, Yom began, it was available to the person, it was edible. Vahoda idchik, and then it, it went into a non-edible state. Vodirzi, then it returned to an edible state. So there was a, a period of time on Yom Tov or Shabbos where it became inedible. So the question is, and when it's inedible, it's muktzah. Because it's not, it, it loses its status of what? Of, of a food item. So the question is, do we say once it goes into that inedible state, it r- remains there? Or do we say since when Shabbos began or Yom began, it was, it was edible, even though at that period of time was inedible, if it returns to an edible state, it does not have the status of muktzah. My, so that was the question I feel posed to Rova. Omale yesh He says, no, that if it goes into an in- inedible state, then it's muktzah. Yeah, it started off, the, the classic case is Grooks, you had grapes and you had figs, so they're edible. You put them up to dry, so at the one stage of the drying process, of course the way it oozes and it, the various fluids, it becomes inedible. And then afterwards, only it finishes drying on Shabbos or Yom Tov. So at the end of the day, it's, it's edible. But because there was a time it's inedible, when it becomes edible, is it muktza because of what happened in the interim. So Rav answered, it's muktza, yesh muktza. Eisvei, so they asked the Rava, Veshov and Shemnolad Umumo Yimosh Shuzabun Menamuchan says regarding the animal, uh, it, it's the first offspring of the cow, and it's born, and as it's born, it's born with a mum, it's born with a blemish. It says everybody agrees that what that it's not muktzah, it's, it's Menamuchan Vamai Neimo Hai Bechor Meikor Havai. Let's say like this. Before the, the animal was born, what was it? If you'd slaughtered the mother, you could eat the child that's found within the mother. Now the child is born. It becomes, not it becomes, it goes into a state. Of course, once it's born, it's, it takes on the status of a Bechor. A Bechor, you're not permitted to slaughter. Now it has a blemish. It has a blemish. So it was until you showed it to the Chochem to be able to evaluate whether the mum is a mum or not, it was off limits. So before it was born, when Yom Tif, Shab, Yom Tif began, this calf you could have eaten if you were slaughtered the mother. Right? Now it's born, you can't eat it. Because that has to be determined. The blemish it has is a blemish, not a blemish. But until you show it to the Chochem, it's off limits. And now when you show it to the Chochom, it becomes, and he says it is a permanent blemish, you can eat it. And it says in the Mishnah, everybody agrees that you what? That you permit it. Omer Abayi, Tamer Abzafra, Gondi Asi Daini Hosom. No. We're speaking about the case when it says if it's born with the mum, that the Dayonim was sitting there. And as it was born, there was, it never reached a point that it was even a question. They ruled as it was born, this animal is not a Bechor. Meaning it's permitted to eat immediately. So since it never entered into an interim state, that it was not edible, therefore it it has no relevance to our whole discussion here. Iga the Amri, there's another version. Omalei ain muktz lachatz Shabbos. Rav answered Rav Hillel that there is no muktz. Meaning, if it started when Shab Yom began, that it was edible, even though it entered into an inedible state. The halach is if it re-enters into an edible state, it's not muktz. The first version was it is muktz. The second version, it's not muktz. Leimisayele. Will bring proof to what to Rava, the Shavin. Everybody concurs. No lad will move away. Emo she's a mina muhan. That if the animal is born with its initial with the blemish initial, not it became blemished afterwards. It's mina muhan. 
Iva Bukhor Bekoro have Khazagim Ime. That before the Bukhor was born, before it went through the womb of the mother, if you'd slaughter the mother, you're permitted to eat the calf. Isyaladle, when it's born, it chile. When it's born, until you show to the Chochom, you're not permitted to eat it. So it's in a state of not edible. Arzile le Chochom, when you show to the Chochom, Ishtrile, it becomes permitted. So we have a proof to Ravo that ain't Muktzel Chazi Shabbos, that it's not Muktzel. Am Rabbi Abai says there's no proof. Am Rabbi Vitem Rasaf, Rago, the Yashi Daili Hosom, the case of the, of the case where the Bukhor was born with the Mum, the Dayan was sitting there as the Bukhor was being born, so there was never a time the Shaila ever it was a Shaila. They never had to ask the question. They ruled immediately as it passed through. So, so therefore, it has no realm style of discussion. Toshma, learning the Braiso. A person was eating grapes, and the grapes, he had some extra grapes left over. The hell on the gag, he puts it on his rooftop. Lasmib smukim. He wants to make raisins. By drying the grapes, he's turning them to raisins. The tainim, the whole he had extra figs. The hell on the gag, he put them on the rooftop. Lasmib grogers, to make into dried figs. Lo yochal achi asmin mebojo. He's not permitted to eat these grapes of figs, although at the end of the day they're dried, unless they've, they've been pre designated. Same thing is true regarding pears, uh, pears and uh, quince. What is the case over here? They were left out, put them on the rooftop. One day they put them on the rooftop, one day they become mad. If actually, it's what? That initially when Shabbos Yom Tov began, they were already dried. He put it on the rooftop on Thursday. And when Shabbos began, Yom Tov began, they were already dried. They were raisins and they were already dried figs. Lomeli Asma, what, what does he have to be designated? First, that's food that's edible. You don't have to designate the food. It's not mukta. Eat lochosi, and if it's inedible, ki asma lumai have Even say, that inedible food, I'm designated as food. It's not food. If it's not edible, it's not a food item. So what does the pre-designation help you? Maybe we're speaking about he was, un, he was unsure whether it was edible or not edible. And his, he had, his mind said it was that if it is edible, he wants it. Let's say he had muktza that was dry. Here, meaning, let's say something was muktza and factually turned out to be dry and he was unaware. Even if he, without designation, let's say he put up uh, figs and grapes on Thursday. They're ready dry Friday morning. And he was unaware. Shabbos begins, Yom Tov begins. Just because he's unaware, it doesn't make a difference. If actually they're ready, fit to eat before Shabbos began, for Yom began, it's on Mukta. So if that's the case, even if he's unsure what it is, it's based on the reality. If it was edible when Shabbos began, when Yom began, it's not Mukta, it's a food item. And if it's not edible, you could designate it from today forever. It's not, it's not, it's not a food item. El Lav de Chozu, so what's the case speaking about? The Chozu of Yitru. Initially it was edible. When Yom Tov began, with five months in the bottom, and then afterwards it became inedible, Vodi Yichzu. Vi Amrit Ein Mukta, if you hold that something which becomes inedible doesn't assume the Mukta status, when it becomes edible again, Laman Lu Asmara, what do you need designation? If he's telling me that Ein Mukta Lachatzi Shabbos, Mukta has to be Mukta at the beginning of Shabbos, but if something should happen in the interim, it doesn't cause it to become Mukta, so when it becomes edible again, it's edible. So what does it say in the, in the Mishnah we're quoting? Again, it has money. You have to pre-designate it. That when it becomes edible again, you, you're going to eat it even without the designation. Ela mai. So what do we see from that Mishnah in Shabbos? Yesh muktza. There is muktza. Mar says Yasmin le mai avi. So Mar says, and it, by saying I want it, what does it help? If actually there was a period of time that it was inedible, and that caused the muktza. So by saying I, despite that, I want I want to eat it. What is despite? If muktza is muktza. Yeah, this meaning like this. Sometimes, let's say it's a, the interim state, a person who's very particular what he eats wouldn't eat it. But another person who's less particular would eat it. Of course, it's not fully dry. So therefore, by saying, in that state, I will eat it, normally we say the average person would not eat it. So if the average would not eat it, it's mukta. But what a person is, despite what the average person, I will eat it, so by making that statement, you're saying that what's not normally seen as not edible is edible. Because he'll eat it in that state. You hear this? Some people do eat it in this state. 
Vikin Shil Loachli, the other people don't eat in this state. Asmin, if he goes and pre designates it, Goli Daite, so he's revealing that what? That in this state it's considered edible for him. Lo Asmin, but if he didn't pre designate it, Lo Goli Daite, that's why it's Mukta. So it's no proof to our old discussion over here. Because if actually it's inedible, it's not going to help you by designating it. And if your Yesh Mukta Lachatzi Shabbos, and if your Mukta comes into play, even though it becomes reinstated, again, what does what designation help you? Om Reb Zero. So Reb Zero was still, so we want to bring a proof to this question. Yesh Mukta Lachatzi Shabbos, Yesh Mukta Lachatzi Shabbos. If, if Shabbos or Yom began, it's not Mukta. Then it becomes Mukta. Then it, it, it becomes available again. Do we class it as Mukta or not? Toshma. The Pulam Vadash, we have a proof from beans and lentils. Now, when you put beans and lentils to cook, right? You put them on a fire before Shabbos, and they cook. When they're raw, a bean, you could eat a bean when it's raw. You could eat the lentil when it's raw. But when it's partially cooked, it's not, it's not cooked, it's not raw, you can't eat it. So it comes out when you, and at the end, when it finishes cooking, you can't eat it. So, so the question is, how could you eat it? If you say, whenever it reaches an edible state, it, although it reverts back to an a edible state, we consider mukta. So how, how do you ever eat beans that you cook, you put up to cook at the beginning of Yom Tif, How do you ever eat it? You cook a pot of beans. Of course, there's going to be a time it's going to be edible while it's cooking. Or Shabbos. You put up a pot of, 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 to cook before Shabbos. And it cooks on Shabbos, and you take it off uh, Shabbos morning. There's, there's a period of time that it's inedible. It's how you, it's, that's the worst question. Pulin v'adashi, and beans, and what, and lentils, v'ikoro choz lochus. Initially, you could eat it raw. You could chew it raw. Shadinu b'gedera, when you put it into the pot, it becomes inedible. So Rashi says, when they're, they're really hot, you can't eat it. You have to wait for it to cool down. Gome bishulayu, but once it's finished, being, it's finished cooking, then it becomes edible. And yet the halach is that you permit it to eat the beans and the, and, and, the, and, the, and the lentils. So what do you see from here? That what? That although it entered into an inedible state during the cooking process, it says, it says explicitly that you permit it to eat it. So how could Rav say, Yesh Muktz L'Chatzi Shabbos? Here you see, Eim Muktz L'Chatzi Shabbos, right? Amalei Abaye, Sabaye says, the question doesn't begin. Ultamech, Tikshlech, there is the Alma. What do you have to pick, quote, be a Mishnah of, of beans and, uh, and lentils anytime you cook anything? You have meat, you cook, you cook it up raw, you can eat it. When it's not, it's only partially cooked, it's inedible. Kres Alma, Do Astam Kter is the Alma, Be'i Whenever you put a uh, pot up to cook during the twilight period it's, it's, it's scolding hot you can't eat it right you can't eat it but yet that night later into the night you serve it at the Suda when you serve in Suda it's not as hot as when it's in the pot when it's in the pot you can't eat it that's how, that's how scolding hot it is so what's the difference so why do we say when you have the grapes and the figs on the roof there it's muktza here you know, it's not muktza hello gone will be the old and if actually a person's in control, when you put a pot on the stove, it's just a question. Even when you start, you're in control of ha- when it's going to finish. Right? Because you're cooking. You're not relying on the elements. The sun should cook it. When the sun cooks, you're not sure what's going to happen. Because it's all the conditions have to be right for it to, to, to finish. So if you have control over it, then it's not mukta, even though it enters into a, in, an edible state. Because ultimately, that edible state is only considered temporary. But if you, you're relying on the elements like the sun to dry it and other conditions, it's not simple. When it becomes inedible, do you know what's going to become edible? It's, it's unclear. So that's what we say, Yesh Muktzel Chatsi Shabbos. Ki kumbo'ilon, gamru b'nei odom lo kumbo'ilon. If it's completed due to man's action, it's not a question. Ki kumbo'ilon, gamru b'nei shamayim. The question is, do we say Yesh Muktzel Shabbos where it's, it's, it's completed through b'nei shamayim, where it's, it's all dependent on the sun, and it turns out it worked out. It was edible, inedible, and it worked out, it became edible because the sun was sufficiently hot. <coughs> and the conditions were right. So Rashi says, what, what's, what's, what's the rationale? 
Mukta is because a person puts it out of mind. If I don't know what's going to be edible, I put it in mind, it's not, it's not, not going to be available to me. What about, you know, you put something on to cook. It takes three hours. For three hours, you know it's going to be available. So factually, you know it's going to be available. You don't put it out of your mind. Right? You see, even in the edible, it's just a question, I'll wait, it'll be edible. When you put something on the rooftop to dry, do you, do you know it's going to be edible? When it becomes inedible, you don't know. As a result of that, the person's mindset is that what? He doesn't think it's going to be available. Therefore, it's, cons- it's classified as mukta. Okay. You look in the art scroll. So we explain it. Yeah, but that's what Rashi explains. It. Rashi explains, Kevin the biyod lasakno bobiyom, since it's within his power to perfect it on the day itself. Lo matzli midate neid chiyoso. He doesn't negate it from his mind because he put it in an edible state. He'll go pull about dashim inim rayo lekan. Therefore, citing the Mishnah by by beans and and lentils, there's no proof. Has no relevance. If it's a question of relying on the elements, the sun, the cave since once it becomes inedible, it's not it's not within his control to make it edible. Therefore, he has, has he what his maximidati pushes that out of his mind. He negates it in his mind. <coughs> Isn't there more than a dos element? Is it the maisa? Can you go pick up the bean and it's, it's raw, so it's picking up muksa. No, no, raw bean, you can eat raw. You can eat raw. That's, that's, that's why it's called lochus. Lochus means okay. eating something raw. It, it's edible in the raw state. Okay. Exactly yeah. Okay. I'm just qu- quoting Rashi. <laughs> Tosas asks a question, where it says in Shabbos, let's see, you want uh, chickens and a mukta, they should, they need a, like a step to, to, to jump into the coop. And they, let's see, so chickens on Shabbos are mukta. They're chickens that are designated for slaughtering. Okay, so you take a basket, turn it over, the chickens, they hop on the basket, and they skip into the, hop into the coop. So it says that the, 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 the basket's not mukta. Why? So he, so he asked when the chicken is on the basket. The basket is mukta. You're not permitted to touch the basket because it's it's supporting the chicken. But the, ch- the chicken's mukta. And yet it says when the chicken's off the basket, you can take the basket and use it for whatever you want. So why did the Gemara bring proof from there that a muktzil chazi Shabbos? You see, mukta is not. Even though there was a period of time that you couldn't move the basket when the chicken was on the basket, right? So therefore. One way of proof from there that mukta has to be continuous, but if, the, if, it's, if, if it's reinstated, you see it's not mukta. That's Tosa's question. Tosa's answer is there's a big difference. There, when the chicken goes on the basket, the person could always swoosh it away. So every moment, the basket could be available to you. The, the figs, when you put them on the roof and the uh, grapes, until the sun shines sufficiently, that is not, it's in a state where it's, at this moment, not edible. And it remains not edible unless something happens. With the chickens on the basket, any moment I want, I could wave my hand and I get them off the basket. So the, it was always considered equipment, always available. It's like always being in an edible state. That's how the, those are the French aids. Okay? That's the same idea the food that's too hot to eat and you can throw it off the I, th- it's, I think it's, the, the case of the uh, chickens are easier because with the ki- food that's, that, that's hot, it t- still takes moments to cool off. Here, instantaneously, you just swoosh them off. The, 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 the birds are off the basket. Okay. Rabbi Yudan Nesiyo, Havalei Ha'ubukhra. Rabbi Yudan Nesiyo, this is not Rabbi Yudan Nesiyo, Rabbi Yudan Nesiyo, Rabbi Yudan Nesiyo, he had a Bukhor. He had a Bukhor. Shajal Kamid Rabbami, and it had a mum. So he sent it before Rabbami to evaluate 
whether it's a mum or not. Okay? Shabbat Lubmerzio. He he chose not to see it because he held we had remember we had discussion that evaluating a mum on Yom Tif it's like giving a a, a psak bezdin. Therefore you don't do it. Omale Reb Zriko, Tem Reb Yimri, Reb Yudah, Reb Shimon, Halok Reb Yudah. There's a Machlok Reb Yudah and Reb Shimon rule of Reb Yudah and Reb Yudah is of the opinion, yeah, that you permit it. So why is it? Hoda Shajul coming to Reb Yitzchok Nafko, Sovat Lo Merchia. Again, he sent the same Bechor before Reb Yitzchok Nafko. Again, he chose not to see it, not to rule on it. Omale Reb Yimri, Tem Reb Zriko, Reb Yudah, Reb Shimon, Halok Reb Yudah. Yeah. Yeah, so we do see it. Oma the Mevet Uv the I'll be back in two seconds. One said, You're not permitted. So he said, well, We have Machlok, Rabbi Yudah, Rabbi Shimon, we rule up Rabbi Yudah. you permitted. This is the same Rabbi No, 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 no. Rabbi Yudah and the Sio is not Rabbi Yudah. Rabbi Yudah is Rabbi Yudah, Rabbi Yudah. He's, he's Machlok, so Rabbi Yudah and Rabbi Shimon in the Mishnah. So Diff, different Rabbi Yudah, right. Omale Rebabo, my time lo Shafkin lo Rabbonon, le mever of the Rabbi Shimon. Just the contrary. Why did you send it to the Rabbonon that they conduct themselves like Rav Shimon? He said he wanted to know. I mean, we're saying the reason why they didn't rule. He says because when there's Machlus Rav Shimon, we rule like Rav Yehuda. 
So he said to him, why don't you send it to the, to the Chacham who follow Reb Shimon? So he said, where do you pick that up from? We have a principle, whenever the Machlok's Reb Yudah, Reb Shimon, we rule like Reb Yudah. So what do you mean? So how could you rule like Reb Shimon if the rule is, whenever these two people argue, Omali Hochi Omar Reb Zero. He says, I have a Mesorah. Reb Zero says, Halok Reb Shimon. Right? We rule like Reb Shimon. So if we rule like Reb Shimon, it's, it shouldn't be a problem. So Rashi says over here, one second. So he says, Omar, when he heard that, that Reb Zerah said, we rule like Reb Shimon, which is L'Chumra, which is L'Chumra, he said, so when he heard this, he said, I should merit to be able, to, he was in Bovil, to go to Eretz Royal, to learn it, to hear it directly from the one who actually said over that we rule like, that we rule like Rib Shimon. Rashi says, Aski Vasik, he wrote so she eske lalus lecher who's in Bavel, the Mokum Shreb Zerisham. Reb Zer is the one who said that we rule like Reb Shimon. I should merit to be able to go to Eretz Yisrael, to the location where Reb Zer is there, the Amora de Shmaitza, the Amri Bishmait Haloch Reb Shimon, because he's the one who's the Baal Nasoro who said that we rule like Reb Shimon. The Agro de Shmaitza Pum, that I should be able to learn it directly from his mouth. He's so the clause of Ashkel Reb Zero. So when Rabab went to Eretz Yisrael, he found, he found, he located Reb Zero. Omale Mar Halok Reb Shimon. He says, Did you say we said over in your name we rule like Reb Shimon? Which is what? Which is Luchumra. Omale Lo. Lo Ano. Lo Ano. Omale Lo. Ano Mistabra Amri. He says, I, It's not that I have a Mesorah, that, that we rule like Reb Shimon. I said, It seems to be we should rule like Reb Shimon. Mistabra Amri. Meritonimas is Reb Shimon Hamakoshe in Mum and Nikam Bojo, Mainz Emin Amuchon. He says that the Mum wasn't obvious before Yom Tiv, it's not considered Min Amuchon. Uktonel Brice of Loshen Chachomim. And the Brice cites, so in the Mishnah he cited as as an as a individual. But in the Brice he cited as Chachomim. Uktonel Brice of Loshen Chachomim. Shnam Shmam in Mistabra Kavose. So I only said in Svor it seems to be we rule like Reb Shimon. But not that I heard from anybody the rule of Reb Shimon. He said, I, said, I, I said, it seems to be. One second. One second. I just want to see something. Is over here, over here, the Gemara Nama Bey is the one who's a Brisa. Yasser Boshia, also I see Masisibioni. Reboshi had come and he brought a Brisa. It says, Ben Shanola, Bo Mum, Bervion, Ben Shanola, Mum, Bo Biom, Biomtif, Ham Omrim, Ainzem and Wuhan. Whether the Mum preceded Yomtif or not, but if it wasn't judged by, evaluated, it's Mukta. So that's what he said. The reason why it was a Svara, since in the Mishnah, Rip Shimon is identified as, an, as a minority. And the Brisa, he's mentioned as a Chachomim, the position. Therefore, that's why I thought we rule like Rib, Rib Shimon. My Havalos said that more or Basically, what's the Aloha? Do we rule like Rib Yudah? Do we rule like Rib Shimon? Omer of Yosef Toshma, bring a proof. The Tal Yabashli Rabbi. It's all dependent upon the, the great, the great, the great scholars. Ashlim is the great three, like, ropes. How does he explain? Ashli Rabbi. This is Chavolim. The Chavolim Gedolim the Gas is a cautionly note. Kloma Chachom Gedolim Ruah Vein Nochin Levatul Devarim. 
it just as if you have a thick rope, it, it binds, it's binding. Three great ropes had said this. The Omer of Shimon Bazi, Omer of Shubin Levi. Rabbi Shimon said in the name of Rabbi Shimon Levi, Omer of Yosef Bishol, Omer Rebbe, Mishum Kala Kedisha Yushalayim. And Rabbi Yosef Bishol said it in the name of Rebbe, in the name of the Kala Kedisha Yushalayim. Rabbi Shimon Bechavero of Omru, Rabbi Shimon and his colleagues said, Halocha Kareb Meir. Halocha, we rule like Kareb Meir. Omru, Va Inu Kshishi Minei. Tuva. How, do you, how could you say they said the name of Rameir? The people who were quoting, they were much older than Rameir. You quote somebody who was at your time or before you. Here they're quoting somebody who is after them. How could they quote? El Bashitis Rameir Meaning, it's not they're quoting Rameir, but they, their position, the same position as Rameir. As Rameir. Who is Rameir? Did not. Ashokhin is a Bechor. person went slaughtered Bechor, which he shouldn't have. <coughs> Maka and Heremum, but he didn't have it ruled on before he slaughtered it. He took a chance. Aka Heras Mumo, and then he showed the mum to a Chochem. Rebuda Matir. Rebuda says, you permitted to have it. Because fact, since it turned out that it was a mum, even though he did the wrong thing, this is unrelated to, uh, what's it, unrelated to Shabza Yom Tif. During the week, it had a blemish. He has no right to slaughter it till he shows it to a chacham. He went, he took his chances, he slaughtered it, he showed it to a chacham afterwards. So, the Tanakhama says, review the matir. Reb Meir, Omer. Hoven nishcha pi chacham oser. Reb Meir says, no, that since he slaughtered it, not after ruling the chacham, we penalize him, we don't let him eat the, eat the meat. Even though factually, it is a balmum, but since he did it in a way which he shouldn't have, it was, it's considered irresponsible, we penalize him that he shouldn't do this in the future. That's her mayor. Almuk's over a mayor. Rias Bechor, look, Rias Trefo. Evidently, Rameir holds that ruling on a Bechor is not different ruling than on a Trefo. Rias Bechor, Michaim, Rias Trefo, Lacham Shchito. Rias Bechor is what? When, when you have to evaluate a Bechor, someone, the animal's alive. You don't have to slaughter it. If you slaughter a, a Bechor, it turns out not to be a mum. What's that? It's a Torah violation. A trefe, you only know it's a trefe only after you slaughter it. Right? Let's say you slaughter it on, on Yom Tif. Does Do we say that you did the wrong thing? You didn't do the wrong thing. Because the, the majority of animals are not trefe, don't have a defect. So the, the presumption is it would be okay. It turned out to be. One second. Riyaz Bechor, look Riyaz Trefe. Riyaz Bechor, Michaim. When do you evaluate a Bechor, whether it's what, whether it's a permanent blemish or not? That's when it's alive. Riyaz Trefe, Allah Chashchita. To evaluate the the whether it's a trefe or not, whether it has an internal, you have to slaughter it first. Umino rias trefe afilu biyomtif. The halach is you're permitted to rule on a trefe even yom. This person slaughters an animal yomtif, and he has a question: Is the lung perforated or not perforated? And he shows it to the chacham. He, he's permitted to rule. Rias bechor be erev yomtif. But if you want to rule on the blemish of bechor, that has to be done erev yomtif. Omra baye. So seemingly, we want to say, from there you see, we rule like Rameir, and therefore, we're machmir. One second. Omale abai otu hosim ron bimumen pligi, knosa pligi. Over there, the, the, the argument is not whether you're permitted to evaluate a mum on or not. Over there, the issue was, do we penalize him? Rameir says we penalize him. The other one said we don't penalize him, Right? That, that's the discussion. So they say over there, you do penalize him. We, he wants to say, we, 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 they had a Bukhar, and we wanted to rule on an Anyamtif. What, what's the Shailah? Are you permitted to rule not? He says, well, it seems to be, it's that argument. So Abai is saying that argument has no realm style discussion there. There's a question of a person slaughtered a Bukhar during the weekday without asking the Shailah first. There, there's not, do we penalize? No, we penalize him for doing the wrong thing. Our discussion over here is the court. The Chacham ruling, is that considered like Nero Kimisakin? Or is that considered the equivalent of the court giving a decision on Yom Tif, which they're not permitted? Here. If we do, let's say the, 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 the blemish is in the eye, and it's a thing which it's not clear. Even though one moment it may look like it, the other moment looks differently. 
Dukan Shabayan, if you have the the ble- this blemish in the eye, Philo Rabbi Yudah Moda Osim Shemishtana Lachamisa, Yesh Dok Shinira Lachamisa, Shchuta Kirish. Yes, he's saying like this. Let's say an animal has a has a cut ear, a cut lip. Whether it's alive or dead, it's a cut lip. When you look, it has a type of uh, what's it called? It? Um, um, cataract has a cataract on the eye. When the animal is alive, it looks one way. When it dies, it looks different. So therefore, by evaluating it on Yom Tif, it, it, it's not going to mean anything. Because maybe factually, it's not a it's not a mum. Even though it looks after it dies, it looks like a mum. When it was alive, it was factually it wasn't a mum. Mm-hmm. So therefore, you can't give a ruling after it's been killed to be able to what to be able to eat it. Because maybe it, it be alive, you would see that what it does look. It's not a defect. Okay, so he says. Look, the Everybody agrees that you're not, you're not permitted to eat it. Why? Because there's a change in the eye when it's alive. The eye looks different, different when it's alive, when it's dead. They're arguing we have a blemish on the body. If you allow the Chacham to rule on the mum on the body, it'll be confused with the, with the blemish in the eye. And the eye, you can't take a chance. We don't make such a zero. You're able to deduce this from Mishnah. We're speaking about a specific type of blemish, the cataract in the eye. Since it was slaughtered initially not by, by the ruling of an expert, so clearly it says, since it wasn't, really, if the expert would have ruled, you could eat it. But since it was not slaughtered through an expert, so what is the claim against the person? It wasn't done through an expert. Right? Shmamino Knosu, the Kokon Shmamino, it's conclusive. So that argument there has nothing to do with our discussion in the Mishnah. Whether you're permitted to rule on a Bukhara on Yomtif or not a Bukhar on Yomtif. Okay. Ami Vardino. Person's name is Ami Vardino. Chozi Bukhra de Benisio. He went and he ruled, he evaluated a, a, a Bechor of, of the Beit Nesiyo. Havi biyoma tovo. Beit Nesiyo v'havo. Havi biyoma tovo, lo havo. Havi biyoma tovo, lo chazi, lo havi chazi. On Yom Tif, he would not see it. This Ami Verdi, you know, normally would see Mumin, on Yom would not see it. Farmelo the Rabami, Omelu Shapiko of Yid, Lochosi. They said to Rabami that what? It's a good, he's doing the right thing not to see it. Ini, Bo Rabami, Gufi Chosi. How could they say to Rabami that, that what? That it's the right thing not to do it? Is Ami Verdi, no. Factually, he did. Rabami, Ke Chosi, Mi Esom, Have Chosi. He would actually evaluate it for Yom Tif, the Mum. Ubi Yom Tif Shiuli Koshayol Hechi Have Uvdo. It is. He ready. They say, Rabbi, could you check out the Adam before Yom Tif? He'll come back tomorrow morning, which is Yom Tif. But he already made his decision before Yom Tif. He knew what it was. He's just informing him on Yom Tif what his decision was from before Yom Tif. So, so therefore, the evaluation is not Yom Tif. Right, so it has no relevance that the court's not permitted to give a ruling on Yom Tif. His ruling was before Yom Tif. He's just informing of the ruling. That's what it says. What happened? So Rashi says, There were times he was preoccupied for Yom Tif. He had no, no time to speak to people. So he says, you know, I'll take care of it. He said, come back tomorrow, I'll let you know. Right?
Yeah. See, one of the questions he would ask, even though he saw it before, he said, come back tomorrow, Kohanim, they would suspect that they would intentionally make a mum, because otherwise they have to hold it forever, because it could only be brought to the base of Migdosh. So he would, by interrogating them, asking questions, he would know. So factually, he made the evaluation before Yom Tov that it's a mum. It's a mum. But that may not be sufficient that he's going to allow them to slaughter it. Because if they intentionally caused it to become a bal mum, he's not going to let them slaughter it. Because that's a penalty. Okay? So, so from there, we don't have a, a proof that he rules that you're permitted to evaluate it on Yom Tov. He already evaluated before Yom Tov. He's only informing them if he feels that they didn't do intentionally, then he'll let them eat or slaughter the animal. Yeah. Who gavra the icy bucha lekami derova? Upon you, the mali yom tova. This person brought a bechor to rova. It was what? It was erev yom tov, towards the evening. Have you also rova kochayv reishe doli ene? He was he was taking a a shampoo, washing his head before yom tov. Doli ene v'chaz lemume. He lifted his eye and took a glance at the mum. This rova. Amale zilu idem seilamo. He says, "Go, go, go away today. Come back tomorrow." But he already looked at it. Ki oslo mocha amale heche avodo. He's telling me how did how did it become a bal mum. Now he's asking the child. He said, "He already knew it was a bal mum from before Yom Tov." Okay. Rava. So he says, "Now that we're able to talk, tell me how did it happen." Amale havi shajin sari bach yisod duuta. He says, "No, I put uh, oats on the other side of the fence." And now the animal, if it has to go through the fence, and the fence has, has briars, what's going to happen to the animal? It sticks its head there, through that area. It's going to get lacerated. Yeah? And the boy mechel. And as the animal wants to eat, as it wants to eat, it lifts its head. And it, wants, and it has its lip cut as a result of these, of, 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 of hutsa. I mean, on, on a branch. Oma lei dilma at karamta lei. She says to the Kohen, maybe you're the one who caused it. You set up this kind of scenario. It should eat. That should become a bummum. So if that's the case, it's a basis to penalize you. Oma lei lo. He says, no, that, that was not, that's not what happened. Oma not tamer the garm karamo. So how do we know that you're not permitted to uh, cause a blemish in, in, a, in an animal which is coaching even through indirect cause? How do we know garam is sir? The tamer the garam sir? The tanya lo ba mum lo yebo. It says uh, the animal should not have a mum. Ain li elo shlo shlo yebo. Yeah, mum shlo yebo mum minay shlo yigrum lo ali de davar acher. How do we know that you can't cause it? I mean that that you shouldn't make it that. What about through causality caused it? Listen to the case. Shlo yavu botzeik o dvei levni chal gabe ozen. You put. B- uh, dough, or you put a sweet fig on the ear of the animal. Because you want a dog to come, it's going to be something which is, is going to be desirous to the dog. It'll jump, bite the, the, the person's ear, and that's it. Or bite the animal's ear. Yeah. It could have said mum. Mum lo yebo. It should not have a mum. What's c- any kind of mum means, even a mum that comes about through causality, even that you're not permitted to do. Now you see something interesting. We will aloha that grumma bin yuzokim potter. If a person causes somebody else to be damaged through indirect cause, there's no liability. The court cannot convict you. I mean, so if we already know grumma is also indirect cause that you're not permitted to do it on Torah level, so what's the most question here? How do we know that you're not, you're not allowed to cause the animal to come about mum? Through indirect cause, so according to Pasuk, it doesn't only say mum yellow, it says komum, regardless how it comes about. And what would the case be? Where well, you put a piece of dough on the animal's ear, and now a dog's going to come grab it, and when it p- grabs it, it puts its teeth into the ear. What do we need a special Pasuk? Why is it, should it, why is it any different than, uh, than any other case of grumma? You're not permitted to cause a person of financial loss through grumma. So here, you're not permitted to cause the animal to become a bal mum through grama. Right, what difference does it make? Hmm. Let's 
second. Okay.